freestyle poet. How are you? I'm good, you? Doing well. Reunited. And it feels so good. Indeed. <clears throat> so they made up ADHD. They did. The government made up ADHD. And try to be a little ADHD. bit closer. Um, yeah, so there's this documentary going on, there's articles going on, and of course, you know, it's not going to be on the foresight of the news, but ADHD was made to produce more money for the pharmaceutical market. That's all it was. And then we got nine-year-olds on amphetamines every day. Right. So, and then all of a sudden, the government wants to save the opioid crisis, but that's a whole other thing, right? But yeah, ADHD, that one was wild because it went from like people really taking the time out to break it down and say, well, now I can't even function without my pills. And that happens because it numbs you it numbs you out. Right. And I'm speaking from experience. So I've always believed that vulnerability is the highest form of courage. So... For, and what I hated about being in corporate America or doing anything else was that off the rip, I have to lie. Mm-hmm. I have to lie about who I am. I can't do this. I can't do hip hop. I can't do anything. You got to hide all your social media extensions from All them. that shit. F- fuck that. So um, I took Adderall off work. I never had ADHD. Never had ADHD. My entire life, I was fine. Got a, I was an AB student, high SATs. I scored extremely high in emotional intelligence. And I think when we were talking about gynecomastia before this started mm-hmm. too, I think ADHD, I think depression, everything, anxiety, you're going to run into that the higher your emotional intelligence, intelligence is mm-hmm. off the rip. I believe that. Right? Like you have some more psychological needs that you need to fulfill before maybe some other people. And when they're not, then you're going to fucking, it's going to mess with you. You know what I mean? Like, and then now you got little kids all on ADD meds, Ritalin, everything like that. You ever seen the, uh, Cat Williams does a stand up and he's, and he's talking about his son. About like sitting down or something like that. His, his son, attention span or and something. His yeah. son is running. His son's running across the room. You just see this guy and he'd be like, Doof, and then he'd be like, Doof, and then they put him on that shit and he was like, mm, I just want to run, but Intend I can't do anything. run. No. That's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it does initially. Medication is just made to, like, break you down to the point where mentally you want to do something, but in a functional status, you're, you're diluted. That's it. There is no function for you. Yeah. So that's, like, one of the biggest things. But I agree with the anxiety. The more intelligent you are, it, your anxiety heightens. Yeah. I, I've come to know that the more aware that I am of certain habits that I have, certain things around me, people around me, behavior patterns, um, just marketing, even marketing, like, those things are those small things are like major components in our yeah. life every day because it's like we indulge in that right mm-hmm. so you ever heard of intimate fasting no all right so intimate right, fasting kind of, yeah tell me about all that. right so <laughs> intimate fasting is um it's all about basically it's from two standpoints so on a healthy standpoint it's saying like i'm not gonna consume all of these things i'm gonna stop and for a few hours or for a few days you could do it for like 24 hours you could do it for 72 hours you could do it for a week right where you're on this fast and you're just drinking water. Okay. Now, if when you break the fast, of course you don't. You're not gonna go back and have a burger and fries. Like that's not how that works. Yep. Like you need to have like a juice. You know, like make you a kale, fresh juice. Don't go to the produce store and buy one. Right. On the mental end, it's more about okay, if I'm gonna do this fast, that means I'm my day proceeds as it, as it usually would. Right. So you're running into these different aromas. People are gonna offer you things. So now everything becomes mental. Can you say no? Or is your body the one controlling you in a sense where like, oh, you're going to do this, but you know you really didn't want to, but you're allowing your body to take over for you, right? It's like you're not thinking for yourself. So that's why like I do it for myself, like more so like a mental discipline thing. So I'll yeah. do it for a day or two, you know, just to see a few hours. Um, I'll try to push it for like a week just to see if I could do With it. Just water? Yeah, just water. Damn. And maybe a date here or there. You know how to do it for Ramadan? <laughs> no, I feel you. That's, uh, I like that concept a lot. It's cool because it builds up your mental discipline for you like yeah. to do something and not to do something. Especially when it comes to nipping excuses in the butt. You know? Right. I feel like a lot of people are probably basing excuses on shit when you have all these variables up in the air that they could be coming from and you're never doing any time or any work towards picking which one. Mm-hmm. When you do that, it's clearly just your mental, I mean, water ain't doing it too well. Yep. Who knows what's in the water? But it's I wild because it's like, <laughs> you're not going to be drinking two gallons of water a day. Yeah. So you have to drink a gallon of water a day. Maybe okay. a gallon in a cup, because then you got to be mindful of water weight. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so so where'd you pick that up from? Um, One of my closest friends, Jose, 
So we're always like looking into new stuff, Googling new stuff, whatever. You know, talk to people, mostly strangers in New York. Right. And you just hear all these different things. You're like, okay, I want to know, I want to know. Just like the other day, I'm on a train and I stopped this guy and I'm like, yeah, I just feel like I got to talk to you. And he was like, what? I was like, I just feel yeah, like I got to like talk to you. Shit. I feel like it's something I got to learn from you. I don't know, you mm-hmm. got this vibe, right? So he, he like bends down, <laughs> Yo, there's no seats okay. on the train. And he's like, oh yeah, you know what? Uh, let me tell you, I'm reading this book. You know, you into yoga. And I said, you know, I like yoga. I said, I don't do it often enough to for it to be like my lifestyle. I would like to. And he's like, okay. Pulls out a book, right, from his bag. Good on that, too. All right. Pulls out a book from his bag, right? <laughs> me, I'm, I'm all about books. Mm-hmm. You want to be my friend? I don't, don't buy me no fucking materialistic shit. Buy me shit that will challenge me. You feel me? Yeah. Don't buy materialistic shit. Okay, certain people don't get it because they care. That's, that's fine. But as a friend, and we speak and we're having conversation, you see that I'm having all these crazy conversations, these thoughts, these moments, and I want to learn, I want to see, yeah. give me that. So this man opens up the book. And he's telling me about yoga and the different like spiritual ways that it taps into you, but how you have to tap into yourself too. And he said, you know what? You're so confident that people are going to be, he was like, maybe they are already, but they're going to be um, intimidated by you. Mm-hmm. And For I was like, sure. I was like, you For know, it's crazy. Sure. That's very true. I used to recognize that I was very aggressive because coming from New York, you don't realize it because everybody is that way. Right. How you talk to people, you don't realize it until you go out of state. Feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure. You can put it. I'm good. Yeah. So. I'm Right. Look, see, we were talking about uh, doses, right? Doing everything in doses. Uh-oh. Uh, everything in moderation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you got to not. Look, that's just damn near full. You'll be all right. I've been chopping it down a lot. You have to. Yeah, Bring yeah. it down. But he opens the book. He's going in about yoga. He's going in about that. And he was just, like, telling me. He was like, the more people I'm coming around, and I'm and I'm I'm into myself more every day, and I'm seeing these people, and I'm listening. He's like, I realized that it wasn't me that was doing something. It was, he was like, it was them. Yeah. It was something that was insecure about them that made it feel like you were just overbearing, or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's very true. You that's could be so, so calm and walk into a space, but because you're so sure of yourself and your surroundings, or at least willing to like learn and be open about it, people will be like, oh, you know, because they yeah. don't understand it either. Yeah, so I think that's important for because I I resonate with that heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, I recently have been on this thing where I've been telling other people like or close people to me. I've been telling, hey, like one of the things I've begun to recognize is that I'm a pretty fucking intense individual, right? More intense on the inside. So then the moment it starts coming out on the outside, it's already Mm -hmm. 10x. And I'm just saying how I'm really been I've clearly been gravitating towards other individuals and I really like other people that when they sit down and talk to me I can tell that they're not immediately anxious or my vibes too overbearing it almost in a way I don't want to bring it all the way to like racism but I think it'd be an easy metaphor to compare it to where like you're that's always a, that's a strong ass metaphor it seems like it is a strong ass metaphor <laughs> but that's just a, something where like off the rip, you're different than everybody else yeah, yeah, yeah you know and then now like making it mental right so that's a physical but that's very metaphor. true yeah you wow, know what I mean yeah. so like Something like that, where just how accepted you feel when there's automatically some no resistance involved on their part. Mm -hmm. Like, their acceptance wasn't even a question when you became part of the situation. It was just entering in. And that's why I think real recognize real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. I I think that's what that is. For sure. That's why I like talking to strangers. Me too. I love it. So I want to start driving for Lyft, but I got a few charges that don't fully <laughs> clear a seven years. Yeah, you, you always have something with you. I don't know. Like, so you're like, yeah, but <laughs> Parley, I was going to do this and then, you know. Yeah, but then I go hard on the hard work right. and on the patience and understand, okay, well, listen, if I want to go and drive Lyft and that was because before I quit this corporate America job, I was running inside sales team. Right? I, I met you actually, I think when you were still corporate, no? I was, that was the first real corporate gig. Right. And you, you were like, you were already fed, yo. You was already done with it. Yo. I remember we were talking and you were just oh like, yo, gosh. this corporate shit. I just remember standing in Tony's apartment <laughs> and like, I, I just felt like the stress rolling off you, yo. yo. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to you, yo. Like, I, I'm going to listen to you. And that's why we like connected so yeah. well. That's why, well, yeah, you were in. You well, were in thank you. Talking to strangers worked out for us, didn't it? It worked Look at out us it did. here. Happy we did. Easter, Let's shit. Do this. I'll do a little right? salute on Happy that. Fools Boom. Day. <laughs> Happy Fools Day. What the fuck is Fools Day? April Fools is April first. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, then <laughs> that was incorrect because you should have just not hit my glass. <laughs> I just had to throw it out there. It's, it's an interesting uh, date. It's an interesting date. Yeah. Well, that's so. 
I don't know about where. I mean, I've seen a little bit on Instagram. It'd be, it'd be cool if I, I pulled it up. I'll flash it for one of the cameras. But mm -hmm. I've seen a few things of what you've been doing. And that time since we've really last been able to connect. So I'll set the scene a little bit for anyone that's listening. Um, so, <laughs> so from some of that trouble, from I needed to go back to UMass and I didn't graduate until 2013. And in that time, I planned a TEDx, which was independently organized TED event. Mm -hmm. I, well, I helped plan. It was not just me. It was really was a, it a Brooklyn big one? team. No, this is at UMass Amherst, my senior year in 2013. Okay, okay. Tony comes up in Thrilled. Tony becomes a mentor and a friend and we talk all the time. End up getting a job as a last branch hitting the ground at in Stanford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, I yeah. remember that. Yeah, gotta, I remember. Gotta, but got to be good on the self edit here. I'm gonna throw the company name in there. <laughs> oh, if you go on smart, very smart, smart, very so smart. Easy. Um, <laughs> He's throwing hints. But I'm not on record. Read between the lines, guys. We'll listen between. So the on records, on interesting, record, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I like how yeah, you did that's that. That's interesting. So to, for, <laughs> I'm not on the record. Just want to let you know. Just want to state that real quick. And you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could I technically look at the camera and just be like, "That's kind of what the government the does, right?" That's what off the government Off the record, does. million people might hear this, but, <laughs> but hey, let's go. Hey, hey. So since that time, though, because yeah, I went through a bunch of shit there. So when I was in Stanford, uh, that was a come up of the inside sales. So I've done hard. I've done good work in in corporate America, and. I think that being modest in that regard is kind of foolish because when you look at people like you and I, who what we do is a lot of what we don't do in something like corporate America, mm -hmm. then when you get there, I'm not being modest. I'm saying, I looked at slouches. How old is you? Like 60? You're in this side. I could run the... I'm not trying to be overconfident no, or nothing. No, no but, it's not being overconfident. It's knowing. But then again, maybe I can't because what I couldn't do was I was getting fed up and I was like, this ain't right, right? Because I'm a man a principle and merit and I just believe that you should be able to sit down and have a conversation with someone and fuck HR you know that's not right. even, that's not even HR savvy to say fuck HR fuck HR what my every, everyone it's your job to make everybody feel comfortable well, right that's that's not your that's given that's not your given right to be not at all that. so I learned that I went to the jungle thought I could last a year in that <laughs> position uh, after the jungle lasted only about like three four months before I had it and that was ayahuasca number one mm -hmm. and one of the things one of my favorite dudes Terrence McKenna would always just be saying like hey whether it's ayahuasca mushrooms LSD anything like that or you just do all all the yoga meditation eat right whatever you are jumping to a level of enlightenment that okay you, you want it mm -hmm. you, go ahead you got it now right. but watch what happens when you walk back into a world now that completely does not function by those guidelines those morals practices it's like you're building yourself up to get broken down every day yeah now I know. and then which and then some people go back and they'll just complain about it like the world ain't built for me at this right. moment but that's just and and here's the big argument between the kids, the parents, the brothers, the sister when they say, yeah, but the real world is like this. So if you're trying to say it's supposed to be like this, I was uh, I told them what I should have told them. I didn't whatever whatever it is, right? Like the real that people, your mom's going to want to say, yeah, but once you get into the real world, you're going to realize this. And this is that level of financial responsibility. Ability. I got Sally Mae. I got, and it's I'm basically buying my the groceries. real world is doing everything you don't want to do, Ooh. knowing all of the things that you really could do. That's what the real world is. But and you can't you're afford watching to do some what you want to do. That you fucking love going and they're doing against it. those. Yeah, they're doing it. And they're that. making it. Yeah, and then, then it's and then then this is why everyone's got to confuse this when you argue. This is my arguing. current status. I'm currently winning in life. Yo, currently winning in life. Yeah, we need to just stop <laughs> to that. There you go. I'm currently winning as well. And you can always be currently winning and be on the bottom. This we'll wrap back to this in regards to anxiety. But yep. either way, then that argument when someone is trying to tell you more about hey responsibility and context is going to come knocking on your door and that's what i mean when i say this is the real world mm -hmm. right and then the other person is saying i'm trying to be a good man i'm trying to be a good woman i'm trying to do what i know is truly right and then you get into these situations with significant others and this this and that and next thing you know a a, a woman mentor figure can like and I'll just say here, not Tony, because that's what this conversation would <laughs> okay, lead to, okay. right? But could yeah. you go and tell you something like, you told her that that happened? 
why would you do that? You, I mean, you're in a rock and a hard place, but you told her that, that and you're going, oh, I'm trying to be a good person, person yep. right? And then now you're getting crucified, crucified you, but you're getting crucified in regards to that same fucked up real world, world context, context that was there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And now it's you like, don't so know what you're arguing right? about. Yeah. So this is why the conversation is important because Twitter never can never hash out that real world thing that we just talked about. Yeah, but... So I went that's back. Just, that's a never-ending conversation. And where'd you go? I went back. <laughs> I, I got the jungle. I quit the job. Had a hiatus. Got us all this equipment, right? Well, what, 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 what do you see from the time, the last time we were together? Where did you, what did you see? Work. I definitely, like, at least, oh, I'm talking about for you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, so what have I seen of you? Yeah, I've seen you just doing more With work. perception. What? Your perception. My perception is... Fuck yeah. <laughs> Dope momentum. Let's go. I'm seeing a lot of kids in the audience. This is cool, right? Like mm -hmm. this is this is what I'm about. It's it's the youth. Get to them young. I mean, there's some of the spoken spoken word like slam whatever that you're doing in front of kids mm -hmm. and I'm just like and then and then there's parts where okay, so the you and I might be watching this from afar going like like, oh, yeah, she's she doing her thing. But the kids, the kids are the kids in us who are who make the roar on the... Mm. The, the silly entrepreneur is so much cleverer than most, but most people never get to it. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough to impress, impress that them. other people. But the kids, the kids... They light up. I see it in comedy at the Wilbur all the time when I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's clever, that's cool, but I mean, it's not making me laugh. And then right. I'm like, damn, I guess I'm... Um, I'm slumped down emotionally. I've been beat up a lot, whatever, but that's what I That's the way Ayahuasca you start losing, yeah. Yeah, that's what Ayahuasca will teach you, though, is that if this is ground zero for your emotional level, you will never, ever have a day this good mm -hmm. if you don't have a day this bad. And what sucks is true. that there's a lot of this bad when we living in the real world and well. the context, right? So a lot of this fucking bad ends up beating you down. Here's where depression's coming in a lot more. Is you just got to beat through the gravel. Yo, you What's do. What's it, uh, life experience? Mm -hmm. The more life experience you have, the, the, you have a better chance of having a better life. For sure. Your back, yeah. your back is always against the wall. You're tired of it being against the wall. You want to push for something further. It's just different. But you find different things that you can lose. You find shit that you like. Oh, I ain't got nothing to lose in this situation. Let me but it just it. seems so normal to it you, does. right? It does. It now, feels normal to you. It it seems so normal to me, which is why I had such a hard time in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Same. Right? Like. Obvious, obviously off the rip, I'm not going to uh, have it, if you will, with anything going on in corporate, whether that's the sly attitude, the no level of respect, the bullshit that you need to put up with, the, that is wrong, that's oh, ethically wrong, that's unfair, this is me, you're like, being rude this to was them, me. This and I'm over here like, you need to get that's slapped, me. you need to get slapped, that's I would me at work. I'd check you any single day on the street, that and now me. I need to block all this fucking, oh, oh my every God. day, every day, every day, I was, I was managing a restaurant <laughs> in a city, right, <laughs> and I would go in, and I just felt like it was like a fucking regime for me. Like, I had my military, the front line. Because the kitchen <laughs> wanted to be discriminatory to everybody. I was like, what the yeah. fuck? I'm walking into a building full of Trumps from Mexico. Like, this is crazy. And I was just like, what is going on? So I'm forever cursing the people out in the kitchen. And they're like, oh, but HR I said, who gives a fuck about HR? Be human. Yeah. Let's check this shit now. And then How you're acting is not the some fucking more right confusing way. Confusing things where one person's arguing on moral statue, one person's arguing on context and the real world and whatever. And, and I'm the like, rules. stop all the extra stuff. Just talk it out. You don't even know why you're mad. You're but mad. You're everything mad. told to you money, since you got popped, popped out by the yep. culture is telling you, you to conform. You just gotta break the cycle. Yeah. It's something that happens. That's what I'm saying. It's the life experience. Mm. It's something that happened that clicks and you get it. And you're like, okay, that's life. I'm going to win some. I'm going to lose some. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you have more leverage for you to uh, level the field. Yeah. The field was never level, they say, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a chance to level the field more. You get more rugged. It's like you get more practice in every day. Yeah, more practice. I'm not, right, I'm not yeah, fucking yeah. up in life and not learning from that shit. Or <laughs> fucked up shit's not happening to me and I'm not understanding, okay, how I dealt with it, how I could have done with it better, you know, next time to expect or how to prepare better. You got to use the shit. It's like um, mm -hmm. being militant it's for momentum. yourself. It's momentum. Yeah. If you think of yourself in a boat going down a river, mm -hmm. right, each one of those things that fucks up would signify like a 
boulder, a rock, or whatever. And there's and what I'm and at least the struggle that you don't do and what I was struggling in corporate mm-hmm. was the one where it's like hit a boulder, okay, paddle upstream. And then then if that stream is your fucking energy, watch what you got while you're paddling, yep. right? You ain't got nothing. So the momentum w- and would be if you hit that and you learn it, and when you're over here yelling at the cook or whatever, being like, yo, just be real. Don't think about HR. Don't think about whatever. That's yo, the that definition of that was forever me, Samson. It was so it. crazy. That was me. I was <laughs> yo, like, what are you talking about? They'd be like, we don't know what side you're on. I'm not, I'm not on no side. Just shut the fuck up. Be human. Talk it out. Yeah. Move forward. My If my GM stressed me out, I used to be like, dude, you give me anxiety. I, I'm so honest. Like, yeah. I was just like, listen, That's one I'm living my very best do. life now. You know, you know, old people, we laugh at old people, right? But we enjoy it. We be like, why the fuck they, I know this, I know this old ass bitch and just like gave me the look like that. Like, you know, you, you call the old, uh, elderly a bitch, you're like, oh, uh, you felt it. It was something mm. in you, right? And you're yeah, like, damn, yeah, 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 I can't yeah. wait to be old like that and have, you know, and just be I'm me. Be and I was like, no, I'm going to be me now. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to be me now. That's exactly. how you're learning in life. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm like, people are like, why are you so honest like that now, Paulie? And I'm just like, yo, I was like, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I'm a be mean. So I be think I'm going to throw that on a shirt. I'm a be mean now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that the way you related that to being older and even that person, that was, just, that's just fucking brilliant. Now, everyone's not doing it. That's the world that you come back to after yeah. you get enlightened and you feel like that. But I'm still doing it. And, and hey, when there's this stupid And people ass. look at me, they like, yo, what's wrong? I talk to you when I go out. You can ask her when I go. I talk to everybody when I go out. Mm-hmm. I don't give up. Yo, you got a bad too. vibe? That's I fine. I'm gonna too. go talk to the next motherfucker just because you having a bad day. <laughs> my day don't stop. Like that's yep. crazy. That's what's not about to happen. I feel you. I don't know. Like the world is literally our oyster. I guess like how they say it. I uh, I mean I'm known from if any anyone that ends up watching or listening that actually knows me and be like yeah he ta- he talks to everybody. But what's funny though is that I do feel like I do come across shy. Maybe it's the cancer in me at the end of the day, but whatever it is, here here's the deal. I I picked up on this and and here's where talking it out really is healthy. Mm-hmm. How many things do you actually learn because like a plan does not come to fruition, but when you talk it out, half the time you start answering things mm-hmm. that you were thinking about before. But I brought up in um the the last one just say I'm losing my not see now I'm getting all big on this losing when you bring it that. Yeah, and losing my train of thought. But I feel like at the end of the day being being who you are and if you're going down that river and you just hit a hit like a stone which would be me losing my train of thought right there now i could go and and swim up river which would be me getting quiet right now and sitting here looking like a fucking idiot trying to figure out what i want to say or i could just go right back to okay so everybody you need to go down the down the river right that's what you're doing and that you're going to see the momentum pick up now. It's it a is. stupid thing on it Instagram. Is. You ever seen Keanu Reeves and he's like, put your dreams <laughs> on the internet. And it's this thing for Squarespace yeah. and it's spinning around. Yeah. It's so corny, it but it's just, but it, but it works. It works. It works. Because you could bet on good. Good is a healthy bet. I think mm-hmm. everyone's born innately good. So good people in good conversation are going to, are going to flush out a lot of, a lot of stuff about life a lot of things that'll make you go and get into that argument with that cook or that random stranger or whatever or start up the conversation with them just because i'm gonna be me now Mm -hmm. right not and that's the rush you know when you're sitting there and you're rushing and you're like i gotta go and do this because i have these three things after this okay what are you doing to that time when you're not being you, you now. Now, right. Like now. You're losing out. You're losing out. Be here now. Ram Dass. Shout, shout to, you ever heard of Ram Dass? No. That blue book. You could even take it. We'll meet up again. Uh, why you, oh, why? Oh, civilization. You just pick up and you just become great just like that, right? Which, remember earlier I said, you know, good friends give you books. So. Oh, for yeah. sure. You see? You see yeah, I think you should, you should take that. Like, right. I'd rather. I'm all about it. I have the book with me. That's crazy. I bought the yoga book the guy gave me. I'm reading Word. It, so. so, have you ever seen Awake? Oh, wait. The documentary about Yogananda. Is that on Netflix? It's 
on Amazon. It used to be on. It used to be on Netflix. No. I haven't seen it. I have to think okay. too hard to think. If I saw, I'ma just say no. So for everyone that doesn't <laughs> know, honest. the reason why yoga is a thing is because his homie Yogananda brought it to America. He, He's Indian, right? Mm-hmm. And and the fascinating thing about their spiritual beliefs is right up there with all of their gods is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. right? You go over it's there. Every religion like He's that. He's the home. Yeah, and we're over here like, ah, I'm gonna fucking burn I keep you. Telling people, I'm like, every religion not. is a three sixty. It all comes back to connect. <laughs> I was like, that's how the it world does. was set up to be. Yeah. Which is why religion is just. I'm just like, that's a topic. It is. It's a it topic. Is. But I'm over like, there, me. over there, they're even cool. Like, okay, so yeah, yeah, yep. It. Your God's a God too. Right. Like, what's good? Where we are like, ah, like literally, brother, it's propaganda or anything else thrown at you to make you feel a certain way about India. But this dude actually to Cambridge, Mass, I believe. He's got a center for how to live over there now Mm -hmm. and an art spot. I got to find it. I'll post it in the timetable of contents. Um, But Yogananda brought yoga to the United States in regards to like, these are exercises and practices for oh, I before think, I think that's the meditation. book I'm reading. I think it's for what I'm reading. And he has, he actually breaks down the position for every part of your body or something, mm-hmm. right? Or whatever yep. illness and emotion. That's, yep. I'm reading that book. Okay, this you is why this starts to sound familiar. Double check and see if it's familiar. Yogananda. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he brings it to America. And he tells you the diseases and everything and like, we robbed it. Because <laughs> that's what Americans do. Not a, so. Not only we robbed it like the jitterbug. We, we and jitterbug was the first Uber. Right? They fucking robbed the jitterbug. Yeah. They got him. They could sh- corporations shut them down. But now we got the internet. Corporations can't shut us down that easily. Yeah. Well, now they're trying to. N- yeah, yeah they are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the monitoring the actual internet speed is that yeah. what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then like certain things won't be able to look up now and. If you want extra access, it's going to be extra money. You have to get approved. What a, the the healthy look on that, and just in regards to uh, vision visionary type of technology, is that the black market is far too great. Because no matter what, the policing system that will soon go into things like the internet and any other technology. They already are. What do you mean soon? The, World star. Yeah, Facebook. but I'm just saying the the mastermind big the say the biggest corporations. If you just call them black for evil, fucking the 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 evil corporation on the planet is just gonna go ahead and shut off all these characters. They're not gonna allow this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. You know how big that corporation needs to be before. A kid in Russia with a good laptop is going to be able to go right past them. What I'm getting at is the technology innovation, even on the black market or what isn't considered the black market. What is more like the innovative motherfuckers who could get around the rules through technology? Like fire stick. <laughs> yeah, fire stick wins yeah. every time. I'm like, I'm so loyal. <laughs> they won't be able to get us at all. Like, so you're always going to have a healthier option. That's why the whole bit. Chain, uh, like the bit chain technology that for, for that Bitcoin, like rose, blockchain, blockchain that rose technology. and then just fucking dropped like a dead body. Yeah, but it'll go up again. Yeah, yeah. That's how everything goes. But that's goes. what they said. They, they kept saying that to people. You got a Bitcoin, you should have been gotten it. If you don't have it now, you need to heavily invest right now. Mm-hmm. I because got a they few knew G's it was going to crash. They yeah. knew it was going to crash. Yeah, well, even though it crashed, the way that I... It still bounced back. So I sold predictive analytics software and and business intelligence. So a lot of even needing to understand what's going... what When a company tells you, here are the variables and the data points that I would like to be able to get curves to, Mm -hmm. you have... I had this... I I used to love the analytical knack that... And just thinking about everything like that. And technology... Because everything is statistics. Yeah. And technology means that... If you look at it like a heat map, right, and the government is this big, so they're going to be able to have this much of a control. But then it doesn't matter, though, because if you go into the one little sector that you're trying to play in, their Mm -hmm. control is this big, and you got someone over here that's supplying the parts, that knows the technology, that's doing this. So you're going to have more options. Even they're going to be so good that they could get around the defense of Mm -hmm. the little spot. You know what I'm saying? So no matter what, until we are on this one ruler on this planet... And that is this country, and now we're going to enforce X, Y, Z. Until that happens, you're going to be okay. You know what I call that? I call that, um, that was America trying. That's what they keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's their move. And it fails every year. Well, but then now they're building a wall. Yeah. With extra tax dollars. It's interesting. Let's see how long that takes. I've heard some people argue that it could be a good business case, you know. 
I guess. I, I mean, that's not my solely purpose in life to wake up and like really have this wall on my mind. Life still goes on. Well, technically, everyone that's <laughs> attributing to that thought, that yeah. everything, that's the real world. That's, that's the context. Those are the not yous and not me's, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you so know we're just like, okay, just another yeah. thing. All right. Yeah. Let's just get it from there. So, what's up? You going to spit? I'll spit. What time You'll is spit? it? Where's the time check at? 12.29. Well, this, this will take a few days to post up because the rendering takes a really long, long time. time. right? Yeah. That's where we got to put in. Wait, but before we spit it all, I want them to at least hear what it is you are. So you asked me for at least what I saw on the outside. I got yeah. a little metaphorical and then started, we started getting deep. Yeah, again. and but then what, we, we went into our own thing. I told you that's, that's how minds are. That's how minds are. That's but I would like, ADHD. I'd like <laughs> <laughs> loving too much. Right. I'm loving this direction <laughs> right. too much. I'm not going to stop at the boulder. Go I'm not going to go right. upstream. There we go. That's what they call ADHD. <laughs> yeah. AKA yeah. It's just the control, right? Yeah. You see how that works? It, yeah, it is. It's now. the boulder. Yeah. It's the boulder. But, um, okay. So I'm parlay a freestyle Poet, spoken word poet, motivational speaker, um, workshop developer. I do everything, teach, um, but mainly spoken word is my thing, right? So I've always been about this um, whole like interaction thing. I like all poets. I like all poets. Put that out there. But I didn't like how some poets would just come and that was it. And then you dropped your fire and then that was it, you know? I felt like there was no um, connection. And that's what a lot of old poets actually did beforehand you know Langston Hughes and everybody that's what mm-hmm. they had going on beforehand right and yeah and then it was a point where I was just like I needed a voice and something just happened so you know how actually did I tell you how I got started yeah. um St. Francis College I was organizing a show um myself and like other people I went to school with we were really cool we had a whole movement um it was actually what we were student government and we were running student government and we was just like, boom. So we booking shows on, on campus. Like, we bring a hip-hop showcase. That's when Dean's List started. Right. That's how, actually how Dean's List tour started. Um, you know, so from stuff like that. So whatever. We had a show. So people were late. You know how that goes. Your time slide. We running in there like, yo, Parlay. Yo, we, two performers. You know, we don't think they're going to make it. We got to close out. I was like, okay. So why? I was like, okay, we got to close out the show. How right? big is the show? Um, It was packed. It was a little, um, the auditorium at St. Francis. It was packed. I say like 200. Right. 250 okay. seats we had in there and yeah it was packed like I'm um, staff was there parents were there our parents were there you know um some people worked at school <laughs> you know like the people <laughs> come to see like what all these black and brown kids doing on campus type of deal yeah um so yeah I'm like oh they're like yo you should you should spit <laughs> you should spit right and I'm like um what and then that girl that thing you always do. <laughs> right. Let's see where these yeah. funds are really going to. Like I've kind of liked a little beep bop in my day. <laughs> right. Hey, that was that was pretty cool there. Like. But um, yeah, so they were like, yo, you gotta spit parlay. And I was like, what? I was like, okay. Never did this before. I spat Samson. I, I, that had to be like the worst, best performance I've ever had. Cause it was my first performance, but it yeah. was so fucking long. When? It was so long. But it was great. It was dope. The um, it was about what M O K, Black okay. History Month. Um, so it was really dope, uplifting, positive. I took words from them. It was the first round. I was like, okay. Then it just started a thing where I was just going to different schools, getting invited to spit at their events. Right. Just, then somebody hang on. Like, were you reaching out to them? No, they were reaching out to me. Like this is people. Just and how were they it. finding out about you? Through Instagram, through, Facebook, through referral, like through Saint or through Fran- was it Saint, Saint Francis, Francis College? Yeah. Hell no. You, I, I go there already, Samson. That's enough. All right. They're not about <laughs> to be like controlling okay. my shit, right? Sound like me on the radio. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. Um. It was actually through through people. They see me okay. on Instagram. That's when Instagram was really picking up. Yeah. Actually, that was about time Instagram was really picking up. Yeah, Nobody you have a good following. Do. Yeah, yeah, I have a decent. I think yeah. a decent, a little healthy though. Um, but yeah, it was through that, and I uh, started doing Dean's tour with Nigel, and we, it went from there. And somebody was like, "Oh, you don't get paid?" No, someone offered me money, and I was like, "Okay." How much? It was like one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred fifty dollars to perform for like 10, 15 minutes. Um, That's pretty good because if you looked at like a stand-up comedian's path towards mm-hmm. making money and the end goal and that journey, like 150 bucks a show takes a while. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. So I got the 150 and I was like, oh, I could pay for this. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I love what I'm doing right now. I'm tired of this job-to-job shit. 
I was like, when I tell you I was like a, a true West Indian, I was working at a gym. I was working at a restaurant. I was fucking babysitting. I was fucking, no, I was house sitting. Like, I, was, I had mad shit going on. Had mad shit going on. I was like, I like this one thing. I'm going to make money off of this one thing right here. And so. That's the goal, right? Word. So I saw it and yeah. I was like, boom, I'm going to do it. I did it. I started looking up stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, you got to get artist resume, do more shows, talk to more people, just be you. And I became a lot more open, actually, with it, which is pretty cool. So over time, I kept it up with the whole, like, interacting with people. I love the idea of doing something that I wanted how I wanted to do it. So that's why I left it, freestyle spoken word poetry. I still write poems. I just don't perform those. Gotcha. Right? So maybe, you know, that'll be a project thing. Just do you have a hard time with that, writing? No. Word. I like writing. I could randomly write something. I got to write right there when I think Word. of it. I need it could be like better. the most awkward time. It's crazy. I, I, I have my book all the time. Um, I put it on my phone sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I always still try to remain like writing, like physically. Yeah, they say that you it. memorize things uh, like you have a 60 to 70% retention rate when you write versus uh, typing is less than 20. I mm. believe that. I don't know if I actually ever heard it, but I know they implicated less than 20. But either way, I mean, think about that. I mean, even just ha- remembering in your day, mm-hmm. having a written list, and if you build that into a process or whatever, how just doing something like that can improve the individual. And that's what a lot of people used to do. I mean, yeah. We used to write journals. For sure. That was oh, like yeah, a normal yeah. thing. Now yeah, that's not point. a normal yeah, thing. Yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah. I know. Like, People and if it like is, it's online. Blogging. A blog to them is their journal now. Yeah, and I think you could implement implement an intern in a pretty dope way to kind of do all the delegatable work, work of decoding that you mm-hmm. don't want to type out. But uh, that's crazy, yeah. though. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. crazy. You think about that? Then when people lose that, that hard drive, they fuck up. Yeah, and that's a b- and like, that- that's it. Like, what do you remember now from your life? Because you have mm-hmm. nothing to look back and read and reflect on. Wouldn't you argue, too, that what you were saying before about how I'm going to be me now yeah. is executed more when the culture as a whole was keeping journals, writing things down, I think or whatever, it was better that and way. I'm the 60%, be 70% retention Then you were rate. writing it down what you wanted, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. Was better than, that was when it was, that's what I'm saying. Like, that could be a life hack to help that everybody. I'm looking at, yeah. and that's how I got that concept. Word. Like, look at these older people in their 60s, their 70s. Damn near some some of them in the mid fifties pushing sixty, mm-hmm. living their life. I have an aunt, right, and she's amazing, beautiful woman, smart, just gets it. She can take care of any anything that happens in my family. She carries the weight, you know. Like mm-hmm. something happens, she's got it. She's thought about it, whatever. You know, my aunt loves wine and loves smoking weed. <laughs> like what? I mean, do you know, you know how long it took for me to, to, to be able to smoke with this woman. <laughs> like that. That's how. That's how real it is. Like, and I was okay. like, she's living her every day. She tells her truth. You meet her, Samson. She be like, "Oh, I, okay. Who who bought this nigga in my house?" She'll say the shit to you. She's like, "Why are you in my house? I don't like your attitude." And I'm like, "You see, I, yo, it's yo, a reminder. Not skipping a boulder don't for skip a second for down shit. the stream. Like it's just not going personal. Right it's not personal because I'm just letting you know. It's not personal. What's her name? Um, Shout out to God. Nah, let me not. Nah, let me okay. not. Are you kidding me? I, I have to have loads of shit. I have a West Indian family. They forget nothing. Okay. West Indian. It doesn't know how many. It doesn't matter how many great things you do in life. They forget nothing. They never fail to remind you of something. Well, yeah, that's important. And then everyone getting caught up in the bullshit when they go to fucking edit that. <laughs> right? It's like edit that. No, when you when you when you edit mm-hmm. what she does is when you get caught up in the bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. a nice mm-hmm. that is a nice Why are you sum fucking up with to something all that's good. I feel yo, Salun. Mm-hmm. I always do it. So yeah, okay. I took it from there. Meeting people, talking to people, networking. Um, I had business cards at one point. I've never been a fan. Financially, you're good. Financially, yes. Because I'm good. that becomes that's like one of the I've bigger always issues, been good financially. right? So over time, I'm doing this right. Understand? I was working at restaurants. Yeah, I that's was good um, money. right. I was managing an art gallery at nice. one point. Like I quit my shit. What's the name? Um, it was Third Eye Soul Art Gallery in Brooklyn, Jose Castillo. That's the homie right there. That's my buddy. Timetable contents. My buddy. Throw that table of contents in here. Um, You know what it was? That's That point in my life, there's like a staple for every point in my life. But that point in my life is when I realized that the bigger picture about complaining is that that's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if I didn't like something that was happening in my life while I was doing it in my life, that I was just going to change And you're doing it in here. Like, I'm going to vent one time about that shit to one particular person Mm -hmm. whom I trust. Yeah, That's my not mom, gonna my judge. Mom says, and not have gonna your talk, 15 talk minute pity party. Right. And then I'm gonna get over my shit. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And so at that point in my life, I realized I was like, if I don't like something, that's fine. I'm not going to be stuck with that shit every day. Fuck that. That's what yeah. I'm not going to do. I'm going to let that and shit being go. It's stuck, okay. And being stuck is a form of anxiety, mm-hmm. what I believe depression and depression, PTSD depression, and, depression and stuff is. is. Yeah. Depression is it. For sure. Depression is it. That's usually what happens to people when they get stuck like that. Depression yeah. is definitely it. Yeah, that's the, the way. The so I want to make the. I want to get a green screen for the kitchen, and I'm gonna set it up. And um, I haven't seen the one they're making for you yet, but shout out to Ashwin and Shikar. They there's two Indian cats that live okay. up there. They who, do who, the intro. Who say Ashro? Ashwin. Ashwin and Shikar. And Shikar. Yeah. Ashwin and Shikar. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. Thanks so they're gonna make like a dope intro. Something. They. I give them the person at first. I. I give. I love on the producer look when you tell a producer. You have full 100% creativity mm-hmm. range. Do you? Here are the th- couple things that I need. I love right. doing that. They love After Effects and Adobe, so they make these cool intros for the podcast, and they're making, like, a barbell rolling up for my friend Kathleen coming uh. on next, all this stuff. So they're going to do something at a podium, like, with a crowd, I, I believe. We'll see. I have a video up like that online. <laughs> Word. Okay. So either That's way. Funny. Um, so they're going to be working on those consecutively and I give them the person and it's like, okay, so what are they all about? What are they actually doing? They're living there now. They're good at it. Yeah. They know what they're doing in their free way. That's dope. Yeah. So, um, with looking at the things that you put up on Instagram, Mm -hmm. right? So how many, can you give me like a ballpark of how many you're doing, how often, but shows wise, yeah, yeah. shows, I, if minimum I do like one to two shows a month. The most, Word. four or five. Okay. That's, that's when that's I'm like really now. rolling. Like Word. I'm just like, okay, nonstop. I'm in the mode for it. Because for me, I'm not going to perform just to perform. Like yeah. I have to be feeling something at that point in life to me. For yeah. me to perform. Like I'll be like, okay, yeah, this is great. That sounds great. You know, what? what's the story behind why you're doing this event? Like is it corporate? Like you guys just do this. Or is it something that, like, there's a purpose? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, just, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I did appreciate about corporate was the talk. I was like, oh, I'm going to incorporate that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You guys are hilarious. How you're saying it, but you're not saying it? Cool. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so that became, that, 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 was, that became it, the thing. You're yeah. Not saying it. Um, so that's the thing, too. So it varies because, like, in a month, I can do, like, eight shows and be fine. Yeah. But then it starts really pushing it, right? No, I, I have like to, that. That's though. like that's like something. Whatever's happened happening, like in my life, or I realize something and I'm getting it out. It's like it's a momentum. Yeah, it's like this. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I gotta yeah. go do it. No, like, I agree. Yeah, like I'm on it. Like that's it. I'm not stopping. Then when I slow down, that I feel like that's me going through learning. I'm learning through something. Yeah, I'm just walking. I'm, I'm filling my purposes one step at a time with my goals. Yeah, I always tell people like you should have a goal. Like you can't be just waking up. That's good. What you gonna do after you wake up? You do, yeah. So you're doing something you love, you doing something you hate. You trying to do something, you feel me? Yeah. Like now, I, I have a financial advisor. Fucking, I bought like this finance package, so I got a financial lawyer. Buying, like, I, so I don't have to do shit. They're handling all my shit, and I just check in on them. They check in on me, and I'm like, this is this is some things that we have to do for ourselves. Like, you want to be independent? We're we're mm-hmm. we're taking the route of independency here. I don't have to rely on corporate. Exactly, because they're giving you packages. That's mm-hmm. usually what people want to do. Oh yeah, how's the package looking? How's the medical package? You know, like the fuck, it should be good all the time. My health <laughs> is a big part of me getting here. I like like your you should just voice. give it. Like mm-hmm. what's going? Oh, you like it, right? That, yeah, I'm like sarcastic at work. It's the funniest thing ever. Yeah, because everyone making it all so serious that like it to you it's nothing. And I work no. with kids, so I'm a youth development specialist right now. Right at this not for profit, and um, it's just very interesting, right? Because I work with kids. So, and, and I told them, I said, you know, I can't work here if I feel like I'm working with kids. Like, oh, okay, let's just get this done. Get, I said, no, I can't do that. I need to come here for them. Like, the only reason why I'm coming here is for them because I know there's a purpose. I have to give them something that I know so they don't do what I do. Yeah. And they find out different life experience. And we just keep learning and growing. I have to push them. They need to be positive, right? That's not doing work. What they say? No, they, they were like down for it. I said, but I what? need my creative space. I told them. I said, I listen to music. I got to have music when I'm working, do what I do. 
I need a decent schedule. You feel me? And I told him Set straight up. the expectation. I said, I have that's sales one-on-one, girl. Yo, listen. Good and shit. It, 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 that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> that's the power fine. and like that's elevating fine. in life, mm-hmm. like learning from something, right? right? That's how I got that. Yo, I'm going to live me now. If y'all can't take me now, listen, that's on you. Yeah, yeah. That's on you. I was supposed to have a, a particular degree for this position. Don't have it. Got the position. Yeah, like, that'll you know, happen. Same pay yeah, yeah. as a person who, you know, would have that paper. I and wonder what your rising sign is. Do you know? I have no... You know, people do this talk with me, and I just immediately, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Because I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. I can never get... When's your birthday? In. I'm a Gemini. May 30th. Word. Okay. May 30th. I was born on a Tuesday, actually. I just wrote... Oh yeah, my phone was Sounds like a song. Morning. Yeah, right? Mm, sounds like a poem. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a poem. Sounds like a there poem. There could be a poem sure. in a song for it. It could. And a movie. Not that. Oh, <laughs> a movie title. Lifetime. And a hashtag. <laughs> hashtag born on a Tuesday. <laughs> I think that is a hashtag already. Really? I think I'm that I wouldn't be surprised. Fuck it. So fuck it. Every picture just got to do something the same. Yeah, so now, you know, it's, um, I've expanded from just like colleges with right. performing too, but performing did that, got me to youth development specialist right. because I got into the Department of Education. I was teaching St. John's University. I was a program supervisor. So I'm, I was St. doing John's. shit, at, but everything connected to what I love. It was just the in-betweens. That wasn't connected, right? So I had an opportunity working at the table, helping this black-owned business, but it was a seafood spot. I was like, why, what am I, why am I working at a seafood spot? I, I was just like, I woke up a day like, why, what am I, yo, I just be living life so much that I just be trying shit. <laughs> good, good, good. And people are like, what are you doing? Probably, I'm like, yo, I don't know. I'm learning something. I'm teaching something. But I got a lot out of it because I was working yeah. there. I was getting the money for working there, but then I was getting money for the marketing end of it because I was mm. helping him with his marketing. So I was like, what? And there's no taxes And I would just be like Yo I'm not coming in for a week <laughs> And he couldn't say nothing Like you know how great that yeah, was yeah, I was yeah. like yo I'm out I, Like I planned I just went to You're Miami. like a consultant Yeah Yeah and like And it, it wasn't bad But I was working there too So you know I was like serving the food I was on my Kanye West With the fries You feel me I moved up <laughs> yeah. From two floors To busting fries But um Yeah so It's just those little things It's, it, it's those in-betweens That happen But no more I just found You have to be it Wherever I am They have to let me be me mm-hmm. And they do they do. They let me be me. They let me be great. I play my music. Was there any pushback at all? Um, this is a lesson for everybody. I think there. That I think there was, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't happening in front of me. Mm-hmm. What I think it was, the pushback oh, okay. was was coming from my coming director, my coming supervisor. The pushback was between them. Mm-hmm. I felt the friction with the conversation when it was time for me like to take a trip, or whatever. I had just to remind them, like, yo, I told y'all these days, and he felt the way. I was like, okay, yeah, but there's, I, I have paper trails. And mm-hmm. you see how I'm so honest, right? So I'm telling them, I said, this is why I do paper trails. This is why I emailed it to you. you so you wouldn't forget. And you know, they looked at me like this, ah, oh, this smart black bitch. And I was just like, mm-hmm. like, nope, it's not even about any of that. It's just, Yo, I had listen, to have an it. entire one note documented because there was literally yeah, a fake sexual harassment claim put against me. I believe it because they did that at a restaurant I was at with my, um, my homeboy. He was doing um, commissary. He was managing mm-hmm. the commissary and they did that to him. And it was so wild how it happened because the girl got, they let, they transferred the girl, but she got less hours, but they helped her find a job. Yeah, but what job. kind of work is she doing? Now, she's doing some temp. She's at a dead end still. So yeah. Sure. So this is a job where you're getting one fifth of all the leads for North America. And my bonus is a mm-hmm. result of how well you do. Mm-hmm. And I slayed the curve for, let's see how the best way we could all work together to be successful and before you ever make the sexual harassment claim against me, I put a mo- another motherfucker in his place who sexually harasses you at a company event. That's crazy. Right? And But she has no idea because she was drunk as fuck when that happened. Then I go, I start managing the business development team in June, June 4th. June 25th comes She's in Austin. I've never even been in the same room with her without <laughs> other people more than this is six the shit, this times. This is the shit that pisses you off. I felt it. You was like, she's in Austin. But like, this I'm is like, the shit what? that everyone's dealing with. Right. And then the Me Too movement and everything. I ain't saying there's anything wrong. Oh, yeah. But this is the situation that makes everyone who gets raped. They heighten less, everything. You're, you're taking respect away from the people. Or not mm-hmm. respect. But you're taking the respect, empathy, everything else away from the people that need it. Mm-hmm. Right? And now I'm living in this context. And now I need... To, she went in, I told her in a Skype for Business conversation, I said, yo, just because the GM said there would be no headcount changes mm-hmm. until 2018, this is in June of 17, 
doesn't mean you don't need to do your job. Right. You're an inside sales rep. Your job is to make calls and emails, mm-hmm. right? She stops responding, and I come in on Monday. I get called into the GM's office. So and so made a sexual harassment against a claim against you. And said Samson wants to fuck me, and because I won't fuck him, <laughs> I am uh, sexually harassed. She flipped your whole shit. That's all. I she did. am sexually harassed and treated more harshly than the other employees mm-hmm. in the workplace. Meanwhile, if you're supposed to make forty to sixty dollars a day, and that is word for word what I said to her mm-hmm. in Skype, I have everything mm-hmm. locked, and you haven't made one. Why didn't you post that shit up around the spot? What or- you mean? I would have been like, I'm logging this shit and airing it. I would have aired it out. Yeah, well, at that time, that time was now where my lesson came in to document everything as if you're the going to trial. trial. Yeah, the paper trial. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm coming back to this from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks for helping me because I probably would have gotten <laughs> too excited to light back around. But yo, then <laughs> I had... Talk uh, then I, we're working, but you know how out. much more work it is mm-hmm. to document everything, at it least is. in that regard for a faulty individual not doing their job? Mm-hmm. Oh, how many things you need to write the fuck out yep, and yep. screenshot and this, this, and that and get the entire team to yeah, respond yep. and say, yes, we please all respond, confirm that you've read this, right? Like, are you kidding me? Do I really need to break it down like that? Yep. <laughs> you know? Unfortunately. Like it's, uh. <laughs> Unfortunately, yep, you do. This so, is the world that we live in. Mm-hmm. But yeah, see, people trail. I'm telling you, like, it's so many milestones every day. Like you're going to court. And then, then you realize you get to court, and hey, you lost not because you're wrong, but because the real world oh. says so. <laughs> or sometimes you're not prepared for it. You be like, "Court, yo." Speaking of which, so this is the funniest thing I've heard this this year. Mm-hmm. So my homeboy moves to um Cali, right? Yeah. And um, he jaywalks. <laughs> That's his thing, right? No, so. We're from New York, so there's no Everyone fucking such thing as Jay Walker. You see him in you Boston. You just walk, word. The car yeah, not yeah, coming yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. You go, you got it. So he's in Cali. Yeah. And he he's Jay Walking. So he gets pulled over for Jay Walking. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you, hang that, on, he the, gets pulled all right, over. The thing that bothered, no, yeah, he's getting pulled over on the side of the street. Like, hey, sir, you come over here. <laughs> he's walking. Like, that's crazy. By a crazy. citizen or a cop? By a cop. <laughs> it was a citizen's cop. Hey, so, everyone's so hypersensitive. No, they you really don't are. Know. They really are. Everyone thinks they're supposed I'm to be like, I'm going to put the citizen's arrest, arrest on you. you. I'm, I'm calling this. This is I'm my taking right. a picture and sending it to ABC 7 News. <laughs> So, yeah, but <laughs> he's walking. The cop stops him. I don't know what happened, but Jose's like, I'm not I'm not putting my hands up for yep. jaywalking. Just the rest of you. I'm not putting my hands up. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. The cop wouldn't put his hands up, right? So the other cop on scene is like, we can just arrest him, right? So Jose gets handcuffed for fucking jaywalking, right? Funniest shit in my life I heard. So he's like, listen, You're you with know. The whole time? No, 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 no. He's oh, like, okay. tell him. He calls me same, like after it happened. He's mm-hmm. like, buddy, you won't believe this. He's like, I'm, I'm going to have fun with this, right? So here, here's the fun part of the story. <laughs> is that he can take this to trial. And I was like, dude, you go to what? trial for jaywalking? <laughs> so he takes it to trial. He, he wants to fight it. Yo, I said, yo, buddy, you so should So there's fight a motherfucker it. that got a mail that said you need to be there that goes, this is what I'm here for? Yep. He, That's he, our tax dollars. He, 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 he took it to trial. What he it? took it to trial. Okay. He took it to trial. What he happened? said, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna have this on my record that I jaywalked. That's the dumbest <laughs> shit ever. I said, you know, I agree with your ass. Take this shit to trial. Like, fuck that, right? So he goes or whatever, and um, he, he ends up going, and yeah, it got dropped. And um, I, I think the officer was didn't show up or something like that. And I was like, yo, that's so crazy how you had to go to trial for jaywalking. Yeah. Like, who would have <laughs> known, like, yeah, jaywalking. How did it decide? Um, they, they He won. He won. They dropped the case against him. Yep. <laughs> they they dropped the jaywalking case. I was like, yo, that's the most, oh, like, that's shit. some wild, interesting shit. <laughs> like, only in California. Yeah. And, like, who 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 cares? Unless, unless you made someone go, ah, and stop. I guess, but that's New York too. Yeah, Look, but that like, would yeah, still have right. more. <laughs> there, we don't need to get into that context. All right, so this is context. probably a good spot to wrap it up because we got Easter meals. I gotta drive back. Oh to yeah, Connecticut. I, I dropped that too. Don't Two be don't be trying away. to drop bombs for me. I let you know first. I'm I was like, we gotta go earlier. Up. Are you getting picked up? Yeah. Oh, my ride's already here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know. All right. So what's up, Samson? You going? Am I doing um? You, gonna, on, you, you mind know. if I put a beat on and put some ninth wonder in the background for you? Yeah, I don't want a beat. All right, then I won't do a beat either. You can't do a beat, so. So you want me to start? You can start. Okay. Um, I can start, but you gotta give me words. I'll start. You gotta treat it like you know. I'm usually like yo. 
I'm like, listen, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm sensitive about my shit. I'm a freestyle spoken word poet. My name is Parlay. All right? That means you will not speak during my piece. That's the only rule I have. Because if what? you do, don't speak during my piece. Because, oh, no, Because no, if no, you no. do, I will include you in it. That's like the drop. That's what well, I tell people. I can see Tony before. here right now. <laughs> she She's loving it, right? Yeah. No, that's legit the thing. And I'm like, you know, if you speak during my piece, I will include you in it. And I was like, if you speak during my piece, I, I will like include that. you in it. If, say with me, if you speak during my piece, mm-hmm. I will include you in it. And they say it back. Sponsor. There you go. And then we Rules and sales. It. That's it. And then I'm like, but this is how I release it. I'm like, I know I'm a poet. If you like it, you can snap. If you fuck with it, clap it up. Oh, okay. If you're feeling like it, I like that. Then give it up. Right? And people like they nice. they they can relate. So can you do because, that in real time real quick? Yeah, you wanna do it real time? Yeah. yeah. Right, wait. I had to quench my thirst, you know? Yeah. I like how you'd be like, yeah, like, dude, one of the first free freestyles I did with mm-hmm. Tony and everyone, I could see other other people in the crowd nervous and, and like, yo, you can't front. Like the mm-hmm. adrenaline, at least with me, like the adrenaline always hits me. But when you air I love it the out, adrenaline. I love it. Me too. But I need to air it out before it is too much of a boulder. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can relate to that because it's like certain songs I listen to before I perform and I'll spit like their verses. Okay. So like, like calm down. So, yeah. Um, you have any words in mind? You want me to start or you No, just give me some words. All right, people. People, what else? What else on your mind? Just any random words. People. People. You got to remember these words. You ever read The the Fifth Mountain? No. Okay, people. You just got to give me more words. I'm taking my blue book. You're going to take it, for sure. For sure. I I would never turn down a book. Yeah, you got to take that. (laughs) Be here now. So, people. People climbing. Books. We can do books. Books. People climbing in books. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, so I'm now I'm now I'm looking at your creative process a little bit differently because I'm seeing <laughs> that you you take these. Okay, mm-hmm. I thought you're taking them more to like just spit on that word, and this, this is a different intercept. Okay. Um. So yeah, how you doing? My name is Parley. I'm a freestyle spoken word poet from Brooklyn, right? I'm very sensitive about my shit. <laughs> I get a little emotional. You feel me? Be a little vulnerable, but it's mm-hmm. alright because I'm human. You can't judge me, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you for your words. You're gonna give me a word. I'll spit them if I forget I'm going to point at you. That means you got to remember the word, right? I'm only human. Nice. I might forget it. Listen, right? Then you give your words, you give your words. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, cool. The only one rule that I have tonight, y'all. Y'all ready? And they be looking. I'm like, ah, right, y'all got to get excited. Like, I'm giving you 275 Metro card home. You got this unlimited. And everyone just laughs. Mm-hmm. It's the icebreaker. <laughs> you got the unlimited? Ah. Uh-huh. All right. The only rule that I have is do not speak during my piece, please. I told you I'm sensitive about my sugar honey and my iced teas. And if you speak during my piece, I will include you in it. I am from Brooklyn. Got to do it. So if you speak during my piece, I will include you in it. If you speak during my piece, I will what? Include you in it. Right? You get some snaps? If you like it, you can snap. If you feel me, you can clap. If you really fuck with it, you got to let it out. Like, ah, ah, ah. Do what you do, baby. Do you. You feel me? All right, so the word was, um, well, words, right? They were what? Book. Book, people, people climbing. Climbing. Journey. Journey. A journey. Book. Real world. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Context. You about to spit. You about to spit right now. Um, I live life looking through open lines and open times. They never said that even the truth in you, you can't even find in books. Remember, you used to hide them from niggas who look just like me. Remember scars and intersects with black ways? They always said black people couldn't make it on any day, but failed to realize it's all soil and boil and grubble in the void. I know ancestors with blasters that I can still fill in my mouth that shattered from razor blades of America's constitutional ways keep you blocked and incarcerated on yourself daily ways. I wonder how free you really be, climbing all these journeys in this life, and you still not seeing anything that's wrong with how you walking and how you talking. You be bopping and weaving and listening to everything in between, but where's your J. Cole tone in life? Wow. Your nice wisdom just to break it down in real life time. I done seen what a Roxanne could do with a Roxanne, let her be and let her get her rocks off in the sand too. And how it is yeah. when you let somebody be you, you see you gotta be your truth and live you. I remember watching great grandmothers and aunts with slick mouths, and I don't wanna just be like auntie. I heard about stories like these. Where black boys like you could leave but never come back home. You're lost and gone. You know what they call those? These are the cases of America. Cuh, cuh. They keep saying we shouldn't feel heavy for our soul. But I'm a woman with a womb and a gift. And I feel bad for everybody that drops and loses a soul. It's kind of having a birth rejection every time. Except there's no plan B in this. 
They only stop at plan A with no indictments. They say it was his fault, but even if they find out that they shot him eight times in the back, now he's just another hashtag body for this. I see how they like to black market black bodies on black markets. Saw how they left that boy rolled up with no organs, wrapped up in the gym with newspaper stuffed in his body. What a highlight read. Just to know you the front line page and they stuff you with the same feed. Ain't that something you checking with yourself on Facebook but never with reality? I found out what your reality is, was bringing all the concept and you saying this is exactly what it is and you took for everything that it was. And you keep on wondering why facades are not the same but for you it's seasonal exchange. And for me, it's just another setting in life's tones. But you keep on living in other tones i wonder what kind of journey and things you're climbing what books you're opening and reading and rewinding are there any times that you write and recap yourself and intertwine and ask yourself what's going on with life's timing have you even checked yourself lost it all picked it back up just to go back at it all over again knowing that something was going to come stumbling to that's not called a promise that's called a daily fight and when you ain't got white privilege shit that's a nightmare at its best right so you better take it on sight i mean listen i'm just a poet that's for how I feel. Thank you. I'm Parlay from Brooklyn. Freestyle spoke word poet. Hashtag Yo, Parlay living. P A R L A Y living. That was that was amazing. It always feels good like to let it out. I feel like it feels good to let it out. And lately, I feel like I need to scream and shout. The inside of me just wants to make me get it out. And now I'm doing laundry. And I'm living in the context. I just want to read my be here now and be in this context. And I'm not about this damn hex. I'm swimming through these boulders. I've always been a man of the water. Cancer, it's over. Let's go. This is hip hop till we die. I'm thinking about all the bad shit going on outside. But I really need to be me here right now. I need to figure out a different way to hear my own sound because the only person that you ever gotta love is yourself and if you ain't listening to that then shit then that's probably bad mental health and now <laughs> you need to check yourself real true, quick in the true. position that you in we trying to bring all these different people together that don't really all be about sin because we born innately good and we all know what we should have done but the butts have gotten us to a different place and right now I'm standing here a new man no shame face and not hashtagging or contacting commenting into any hypersensitivity be a real motherfucker may look me in the eyes and talk to me so i'll be doing this podcast i put myself on blast i try to be a little bit 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 bit, bit more bold and put taraj on my damn forearm like what's good here's the cast and the cast is no rain i'm sitting here like a nice song on a sunny day with a wide tie but i take cabernet sauvignon instead man and i got some kombucha on the side so my gut health is good and i and listen I to myself on inside a Tuesday. that's a gemini <laughs> Yo, twin side yeah 5 30 on the 89 oh <laughs> <laughs> 89 cool too yeah cool jobs word oh look at that there you go all right yeah Yo, you know what's interesting um, so I was hanging out the other night, right? I met, so I went to Miami. Remember I told you? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, life is crazy. I went to Miami. Me and my best friend. She was getting all. She was getting crazy. All right? we, have, we have our moments, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's just like it's like jackass for us. I don't know what's going. on. It's like jackass, and what's that thing? Kumar and thing go to white yeah, guys. Yeah, I know it's like that about. combined. We're like really, Yo, so when we get together, it's, it's just time. like ridiculous, right? Time. Right. So we go to Miami. We're meeting all these people, yeah. meeting all these wild people. Dope, really dope. So all these adventures happen. I meet this group of people. And they from New York too. All it, all girls, right? Taraj. Right. From New York too. Yeah, connected, That's Taraj. Right. So we link up. Um, so one of the one of them is a couple, their fiance. And then they had um then it was it was two friends. And I was it, right? Boom. And then my homegirl, she lived out there. She right. was from New York, but she moved out there, Marley. Shout out to Marley. Um, so yeah, we all linked up and I hung out with them the whole Miami trip. Yo, like we, like yo, we knew each other for years, type thing. Like That's, we was in happens. hotel, like we were sharing it each other's happens. hotel rooms, going out. I had a stranger drive. When us you know, to you us. know. Right, look, I had a stranger drive us to like the the best strip club. <laughs> like yeah. yo right like only me right i was just like yo y'all want to go to that strip club like nah like that's let's go what's, the what's the strip club in um in atlanta what's that what is that i mean not I in, in, in miami atlanta, in miami actually. what's it the h h something i forget the name of it but yeah, i don't know you don't know I, i'm trying to think but whatever like that's supposed to be like the main it. strip club whatever right mm-hmm. I was like, nah, there's a strip club down the block called The Office, because it's like a, a, a you you driving on the, the office. It's called The Office. I said, we going to The Office. Fuck mm-hmm. this bougie shit, right? We went to The Office. Now, you know, this. I know mm-hmm. I'm a poet. Certain things, you know, you know, very small, secretive, and I'm sharing the story. So, I'm like, you know, we're going to go. We walk in the door. 
This is not my daily lifestyle, guys. <laughs> Just to set the record straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For the record. Right, for the record. This is off the record. Like, yeah, it's Just want to let you know. <laughs> All right? So we walk in, and, like, this 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 girl's already at the door, fingering the pussy. And I was just like, oh, yeah. They was like, parlay, good job. Like, everybody was like, yeah. Like, I was like, that the set right the tone. One. Because what it was, it was like, um, was it was Sweet Heat. That's like an LGBT thing that happens. Okay. There. It's a big event. All the gay people come together, the gay boys, the gay girls, the people yeah. who don't know what they are yet. Sweet Heat. The ones, yeah, it's called Sweet Heat, right? So it's like an event mm-hmm. that happens in Miami sweet for like a week. That's a Sweet Heat, man. <laughs> sweet heat. So, right, that's what's yeah, happening yeah. there. So um, it's really for like the lesbians, it's really for the girls, for the ladies. Oh, and yo, you know what? I think <laughs> I got a close friend that went to that. That went? Yeah. All right, so it, it, you it know, was cool. But look, <laughs> I'm so going to send you the episode. So the thing is, like, that strip uh-huh. club that night, it was only for gay people, gay women. Mm-hmm. And so this guy I met online, he's like, yeah, I snuck out of the house. You know, my girlfriend fell asleep, so I come to the strip club. And I said, um, I said, you know, it's all gay. It's a gay night. He was like, what you mean it's gay night? <laughs> right? He's like, I came out for no, for no reason. And that's when I was like, yo, guys, it's the office. We got to go there. He's like, well, how you know? You're not even from here. I'm like, yo, trust me. You see how you talk to me? You're having a good time right now. You're not even inside right now. <laughs> trust me. Like, yo. you want to go to the office, right? And, you know, first time there. Mm-hmm. Yo, we get in the car, get my friends. We get in the truck. We driving. He's like, all right, parlay. He said, you know what? You keep your word. This is a good spot. I'm going to buy you drinks all night. I was like, all right. I said, remember, I'm from Brooklyn now. When I say shit, I'm sure of it. You feel me? If the situation wasn't <laughs> yo, set, yo. I was going to get in there and set the situation. Like, yeah, that's yeah. it. So we go, we we get there, and he, as soon as we walked in, he saw her with the, the finger. She was popping her own pussy right when he walked in. Yeah. He was just like, what do you want to drink? Top shelf. I was like, <laughs> yeah. hey, the whole night. So the whole night, I'm drinking Douce the whole night. <laughs> I'm like, yo, let me get a double neat Douce. Like, the whole night. Yeah. I was just like, What? This guy was so happy. He was the happiest man on like earth. I was just like, oh, this is how I can be with guys. There you go. <laughs> Take him to strip clubs. <laughs> Buddy, let's do this. <laughs> Yo, you're a G. <laughs> but right. yeah, so that was like, you know, the story of like meeting people and just having fun. And like, I ran into them again because we, mm-hmm. we speak, we see each other often. But this time we hung out. And so we ended up hanging out, drinking, like the bar was set. Our bill came out to $30 and we had like $200 okay. worth of drink. Good go. night, right? Good yeah, people, yeah. good energy. So whatever. We go back and everyone's talking and we're like, yeah, we're going to go to Miami again. And I was like, again, guys? Like, when are you going? I'm going next month. Um, Yeah, I'm going to go from the 18th to the 20th. Fuck. It's a Friday by. to a Sunday. Yeah, I'll be there that weekend. Well, technically, the thir- I'll only be there Weekend of the 13th night. and then I'll be skipping back for like oh. the 15th. I'm going to Atlanta in this month. What? End of this month? Yeah. Mm. I'm down to take a trip. I need, I've need. i never been to Atlanta you and I've been come. wanting to. Wait, I look, followed. Babe, you can come. Yeah, well, actually, well, yeah. I don't know. Right. She's she's with the shit. <laughs> no doubt. I don't. I gotta check the calendar. I see what dates I got put on for. But the end of the month might be 24th open. Twenty fourth to the twenty. Well, technically twenty fifth to the 29th. Booyah, yeah, I remember. Might That's be. like my biggest thing is dates. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I got a, I got a calendar for a reason. So. I do too on my phone, and my phone is not on me. The nineteenth through. No, the twenty fifth. No, you no. That's for May. Okay. For April for Atlanta. Mm-hmm. That's this the twenty fourth to the thirty. Well, twenty fifth for you to the 29th. Twenty fifth to the twenty ninth. And okay. then uh, Miami's gonna be May eighteenth to the twentieth. Yeah, I'll miss you there. So maybe I won't. Maybe, maybe I'll. Plan, maybe we can plan a trip. Because you know, Rolling Loud's going on in Miami. Oh yeah, that that's, happens around the same weekend. time. That's, that's, that's the the weekend I was going for. Yeah. Yeah, and the Cleveland just starts up and doesn't stop. The Cleveland, or you got to go there. No, I'm not like a big club person. No, it's not a club. I hate clubs. I don't What's like the club. Cleveland? I don't even like lounges. Like, I'd rather a bar. I got this a personal space thing. Word, like, you and I both. Let somebody bump me a little and don't say nothing. I'm like, yo, listen, this is why I like my space. Yeah, see, I like getting a table, not because I'm trying to be bougie or do blah, I like prissy. the bar, though. I like the bar, though, because there's like personality. If, if the bar's agree, personality. but when it's too packed and it's a, if it's a club club and it's, it's that I packed, like I only like the table because I like my personal space. It's yeah. not I don't like clubs at all. I'll go out into the crowd and have a ball and then I'll come back and I don't like clubs at back all in. I'd rather like small get together lounge or something clubs yeah fucking smelling ego yeah everyone's right. smelling everyone's running to the bar to buy the yeah. biggest fucking bottle yeah everybody wants to be VIP like you know? oh my god put me on your shoulders it's like some <laughs> sparklers and let's uh, bring <laughs> bottles to you you paid way too much <laughs> 
That's it. That's it. They, they're going <laughs> That's broke. That's what they do. They all, clubs. hey, you got sparkers. Turn on your phones. Turn on your chat, Snapchats. Turn on your Instagram. Look at me. I'm bringing you something you got to rip the fuck off for. What this is, this is called the hustler celebration. Word. What we're doing is saying, hey, buddy, I bought this ounce for $100 and I was selling it to you for $350 yeah. and you like, think you're getting like good time. $400 to sit at a table. You yeah. went out and paid money to go I sit at the table. I only go when I have, like, a connection. I don't need to do that shit. Yeah, and nah, I don't do clubs. Clubs are not the thing. I'm not with the whole like, party. Like, girls, like, where are you going? I like the like chill things. I, I like the chill. One of my friends for her birthday shout out, uh, uh, what was it, a rebirth, right? And it was cool. Everybody came. It was music playing. But we played a game in between. For her? Mm-hmm. How old is she? She, she did it. She's, what, 25, 26? So what she did was... Yeah, um, good age. Yeah. Good age for a rebirth. Prime age, yeah. 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 For sure. Perfect time to realize who you are. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it really is. So Falls she has there. it, and the idea is that we, you write your questions on an index card yeah. or your comments about a topic, and we talk about it. We debate it without arguing, without cutting each other off, and without questioning each other's views. It's just always having an answer to an answer. When? Right. That's awesome. So the idea is because you have to listen. Because I'm edu- I, I tend to hang out a lot of um, artists who are educators. Yeah. And I just think it opens it up, and that's where I think I started to get anxiety when I was teaching. But yeah, that's an, yeah, another thing. Yeah. But yeah, so you know, she did this thing, and I thought it was dope because every few questions, when she felt like it was too heavy, you got up and danced. They played music. That's like my type of thing. People were chilling, they were smoking, they Wait, were drinking. Every time you answered a question, you got up and danced to music. No, no, no. Like they like so like say it was like we were sitting for like fifteen twenty. Yeah, <laughs> got like a if serious they felt answer. Like I, <laughs> you're like, oh, okay, well. Imagine that. Nah. What? No way. Nah, it was like one, one of those <laughs> things where like, okay, we've been sitting like for 15 minutes. We're going to dance now for a little bit. Like, let's, let's let loose a little bit. And we'll sit down and play it again. And okay. I thought it was pretty chill because it gave time for people to walk around, talk to other people, whatever. They had um drinks. They had kombucha, like THC infused kombucha. It was oh, really okay. amazing. Amazing. Herbal teas, all of them. All infused. <laughs> I was like, this is beautiful. It had some vegan food going on. And it was just a chill dope vibe. It was music. It was good vibes. It was people being honest about how they felt and their opinions and their thoughts and their views and not having to be cut off. And it was just like that whole point of expression without the judgment. Yeah. You understand? So, yeah, we all have different views. That's the objective. It's to listen to other people's views. That's okay. Yeah, that's you know? why I, so I wanted like, to I like shit this. like that. Yeah. There was music involved. We was chilling. We was chatting. But we was talking stuff that I can go home that night and I can sleep on. Yeah. I wake up in the morning and reflect on my night. Yeah, I like you, shit like you that. You need a little bit of time for the introspection like that. That's that's why Cause I, I don't get that out of a club. I can't get that out of a club. No, I walk out like you're this. lucky if you could hear the name. Word, but look, I walk out of the club and I'm like, all I saw in there was dead bee fucking fathers, hoochie rat mothers complaining about the. And I was that's, having that's a like great the time. I was there. having a great time dancing to some ignorant shit that I know I don't like. That was real fucked but up. But there was the beat, and they got me there. <laughs> they got it. me that's there. It. Like, that's uh, it. With the fake, with the fake hitting, you know, like you got those clubs. Mm-hmm. They put like the the the, the lowercase fucking <laughs> shelf life. Yeah, and yeah, shit. yeah. I found that so crazy. I was like, yo, like people really take the time out to do that. They wait for the, the real shit to, to get loose. They be like, oh, yeah. it's empty. Let me throw in this bottom shelf real quick. Yeah, no, that yeah. tastes just like Ciroc. Like, what? When they fucked up, yeah, 100%. That's that's a classic switch. It's a classic one. Makes you feel like you're having fun at the mm-hmm. club, right? It's like buying a vacation to still like go back the next few hours. Mm-hmm. They it's just like make you go broke. Picking up and being like, wait, this isn't what I got. This isn't it. I don't know what's going on with this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the wrap up. That's a wrap up. I gotta go eat. I gotta go eat too. Happy just, Christmas. Just, just like that. I gotta go eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once again, Parlay Living. You can find me Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, possibly. You know, I've been. I don't know. I just feel like I feel like one I, of them. I don't want people to follow me on. I know. But I've yeah, only but, been fucking with Instagram too. Yeah, me too a lot. Parlay Living. P A R L A Y Living. Spelled correctly, grammatically. I am an educator. <laughs> I'll know? post it in the time table contents. Yeah. I have some pretty good standards. But you yeah. set the expectation well, girl. You I do a great it. job at that. You be ill at sales. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I would, right? Yeah, so, you really would. Over and out, guys. Have a good one. Happy first. Pay your rent. Pay your bills. Yeah, I hope you all <laughs> exactly, die. Yeah. I hope you all fucking die. die yeah. I hope you all burn in a boiling pot. <laughs> April Fool's, yo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a lonely life, right? Over and out. Jesus, wait. We-